Welcome to today's video of Math Strategies Made Simple with Mrs. Braun. Today we're going to be looking at a graphing on the coordinate grid. So, for today's purposes, we're going to be looking at this first quadrant up here in the upper right corner. This is called quadrant one. In quadrant one, all of our values are going to be positive, and so we don't have any negative numbers. So let's zoom in on that and take a closer look at what we're going to be doing today. So, if you notice, we have a vertical and a horizontal axis here. The vertical axis is highlighted in blue. That is our y axis. And then our horizontal axis down here towards the bottom, this is our x axis. When we look at graphing, our points are always written in coordinates here. Which means we're going to have parentheses with two values separated by a comma. So we are, it's written in the form of x, y. So let's take a look at an example. So for example, if I have the point 3, 6, then the 3 is my x value and the 6 is my y value. So I'm going to start with the 3 and I'm going to look at my origin, which is where the two axes meet, right here, that's the point 0, 0, my origin. I'm going to start there and I'm going to count over to the right three spaces. So one, two, three. This is what I'm looking at right there. And then I'm going to count up six spaces to find my vertical spot. So I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, my point is going to be where those two lines intersect. Which is right here. So this is the point three, six. I use my horizontal value on my x-axis and my vertical value on the y-axis to find where this point meets. Now, when we're looking at points on a coordinate grid like this and graphing, order is very important. Because if I went and I did six instead of three, one, two, three, four, five, six, and I did three instead of six vertically, two, three, then my point would be here. And that's a very different point than what it's supposed to be. So when you're doing this, you want to make sure that you're always going in order from x to y. Let's take a look at another example. Let's take a look at the point 4, 7. So again, on the x axis, I'm going to count over 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, starting at the origin. And then I'm going to count up seven spaces. So this time, you can do it either way. You can either count on both axes and see where they intersect, or you can start just counting from the origin to your x axis and then counting up from there your y value. So my y value is seven, so from the x axis, I'm going to count up seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that's where the point four, seven is going to be. Let's look at one more example. Let's, see. Let's look at the example zero, five. Now, on this one, my x value or my horizontal value is zero, which means I'm not going to move to the right at all, but I'm going to stay on that axis. And then I'm going to count up five spaces. One, two, three, four, five. So the point zero, five be right there on the y-axis, and just as a, to show you guys the difference here, if I had 5, 0, it would be the opposite. I wouldn't move up, I would move over 5 spaces, but then I wouldn't move up at all because I don't have a vertical value, or my value is 0. Alright, let's erase those and give you one to try at home. Let's see you guys graph this one. Let's look at 7, 3. Alright, I hope this video is helpful and we'll see you again soon.